All right, it's the 8th of January, 2012, and you're with Bernie Goldbach in the back garden of Cashel, County Tipperary, Ireland, offering an American look, not at Timbuktu, which is showing up on Top World on YouTube, but of the Irish papers. In the Sunday Times magazine, there's a section called Spectrum, and I always like looking at what the photographers find. They found manuscripts dating back to 18th century texts, a lot of them water damage and giving rise to a lot of my thoughts about the, uh, the journeys that I write about on my blog and how they're probably not protected as well. If you're um, just wanting to get the audio of what I'm talking about, you can check it out on audioboo.fm. That's where I'm recording this inside the Sunday Business Post. Well, first on the front page, stuff about whether the government needs to really look for a court opinion on the next changes to the EU treaty. Inside the paper, some things that I, I pulled up because they appeal to me as an American. Declan Ganley has a vision about Europe for the people, by the people, and he draws on some political science information that I, readings I had to do when I went to college. Himself and Brendan Sims, who's a professor, see Europe as a, um, a choice that has to be made. They claim that Europe has to make a choice to take a calculated risk worthwhile to really unite fully in a democratic and federal union or see the European project fall apart. He's got some point there. In fact, he leaves, he makes several points. There's 11 of them in total. All of them available online at uh, thisispost.ie. Um, Ganley's been rather articulate in his vision about what Europe should be. The federalist model is one I studied and actually one I like. Dick O'Brien likes the model that the digital hub has. He runs an article in the technology section of the Sunday Business Post from, uh, concerning Philip Flynn, who's the chief executive of Digital Hub Development. If we had more space, we could grow into it, he said. Interesting stuff there. The agency that Flynn runs reports over 160 companies have progressed through the Digital Hub since its foundation in 2003, employing more than 2,000 people today. It is a success story. It's also one of the things that the government's looking at getting rid of as they try to reduce what the reach is of the Irish tax spend. Can a company keep your Twitter account, asked Adrian Weckler. And um, the point he makes, one of the many, many points he makes, is that copyright and related acts that are spelled out in the uh, Irish law say that um, works made in the course of employment belong to the employer. But, you know, if you had your account before you started work with the employer, it's probably yours. What an interesting discussion, nonetheless. The CAO applications have started. People have them lined up, actually. They have started if they're part of special programs, which have restrictions on. CAO is the way that you go to college in Ireland to a centralized application admissions office. We have an animation program we're trying to start, where I work in LIT Clonmel. There are some special things that have to be brought in to the mix before the um, 1st of February initial application date. So if you are interested in digital design, animation, creative multimedia, cao.ie, and think of LIT, Clonmel, where I work. Hey, here's something you may be developing for. It's the Kindle. We're doing it. And I'm, I'm putting this front and center called No Talking by Andrew Clements because it's a really good Kindle book. It's an audio book that I got. Dave wondered what that meant to bring order to his mind. Could something as simple as not talking change the way your mind worked? It's a it book called like No Talking by Andrew Clements, and I put it there because I think the little girl's name is Katie, that uh, Catherine O'Mahony talks about, a niece. And, um, yeah, Katie's the, the name of the little girl. Catherine got a Kindle outside my house. You can, you can hear the sound of the, the rumbling sound of the National Road. Anyway, Catherine got a Kindle. She likes its clean, slim grayness, even though she thinks that's probably as appealing as a can of cold beans. But, as she's noted, Kindle makes it possible to read and hold a cup of hot chocolate at the same time. I read and feed a little six-month-old. Coming soon to Ireland, early uh, 2012, a touch-sensitive Kindle, outselling the one that I use, just the keyboard on it. In this Sunday Business Post, is there anything else we'll talk to about? Like I said, American perspective, so a lot of the stuff that's here about Anglo may not actually concern me. But, inside the Sunday Times, some other things worth mentioning. Government's going to ban cheap booze. 
That's probably good because there's plenty of tinnies outside my house which are thrown over the top of the fence by 14-year-olds as they walk up the estate. Inside the paper, some other things, too, that is of interest to me. I'm ex-military, so a story by Justine McCarthy called Just Deserters is interesting. Back in the 1940s, the um, Taoiseach basically made a, made a law, uh, made a, a blacklist, authorized a blacklist in August 1945, which is at the end of the war. And he basically prohibited the hiring of 4,983 Irish who had left um, the Irish Defense Forces for service with the Brits in the front. Um, it was known as the Starvation Act. Basically, you couldn't get a job for years. And now, um, well, there's stories here Justine points out. One of them is about Philip Farrington, a 90-year-old Dubliner, president of the liberation of the bergen Belsen concentration camp. Um, basically, was brought when he came home, he went to, had, was stuck in Cork prison, but he just kicked the food onto the floor and uh, treated him like a little dog. Not so nice. Hey, this is nice as well. That Matt Cooper says that when you look inside NAMA, which is the what he's calling it, yeah, NAMA, the National Asset Management Agency, he's calling it like a corporate horror story, and he explains why. So when you go in there, you discover that if you're a developer and you're trying to recoup losses, that you're actually dealing with, as they call it, poachers turned gamekeepers. You're dealing with former estate agents, developer employees, and even bankers from the failed banks who um, work it out with you, make sure you don't get fined, make sure you can keep some income, maybe make sure you can recover some of the loss of your property. But it, but he has, as, as he's pointing out, NAMA is really doing very little to help the recover and recovery of Ireland. In fact, it might be doing real harm to the country. I like the story that Sandra O'Connell finds about mompreneurs. That's uh, Tracy Ryan with her little, do her little uh, boy. Uh, 32 year old Tracy left her job in hospitality marketing, set up a bespoke events uh, in Kilkenny. And the, the story talks about how moms might do business at home uh, as though their work wasn't cut out for them. Plenty of work at home with just taking care of the kids, but how you might work from home. Finally, a story by John, Ad John Burns writes a column called Atticus in the Sunday Times. He points out that, you know, plenty of uh, local counselors might have been able to simply upgrade at no cost to such a thing, such things as Samsung Galaxy S2s, but instead they went ahead and bought newer iPhone 4s or um, bigger screens of difficult other handsets, which the taxpayer pays for. So the Irish taxpayer lets um, counselors get new mobile devices. The backstory, if John Burns is listening, is you don't know whether those phones actually ended up in the hands or the purses or the pockets of the counselors. A lot of times they're giving their phones to their sons and daughters. Story within a story for that. Okay, story in my back garden is pretty interesting. Look, it's January. We've got rosebuds. And perhaps even more surprisingly, in our little pit here, we've got chili peppers growing. Can you believe it? Well, stories like that are on the Sod Show, Dublin City FM on Fridays. You can catch up with what I do. Follow me on Flickr.com forward stroke forward slash photos forward slash Irish eyes. Or watch the photo stream unfold there. Or on Google plus G plus dot TO stroke stroke top rope. I'm Bernie Goldback. Back Garden. Couch Contemporary Ireland. Thanks for visiting. Bye for now.